Hey, it's Reese, and I'm here at Pelican Reef in La Ventana in Mexico. And I've been here testing this board and other boards for the last two weeks, three weeks actually. And it's been going really well. I've had wind every single day, and I'm really stoked with this board in particular, which is the one that I shaped on my CNC machine at home. So this is officially the second board that I shaped on my CNC machine. So I'm still learning, <laughs> but this is how I went about it. The first step was trimming off the end of the blank just so that there's no excess material hanging off the board while I'm cutting it out. And then I just had to measure out the suction cup supports that, I, that hold the board while the machine is cutting it. And then you have to mark the blank and put it onto the supports so you know where to line up the blank onto the supports. The next step is to really clean the suction cups off well and really clean up the bottom of the board where the suction cups are going to connect to the blank because the better your connection is, the cleaner your connection is between the suction cups and the foam, the, the better your board's going to get cut out and the less time you have to spend messing around with vacuums. So once I had a nice clean connection between the vacuum pads and the blank, it was time to pull a vacuum on the board, suck it down and start cutting it out. And the first thing that I programmed to cut out was the stringer, just to get it out of the way, just in case the machine hits it and knocks the board off of the stands. Once I was done with the stringer, um, I actually programmed in this, this tool path to remove all of the extra foam around the outside of the board so that the machine doesn't run into that either because I had big problems with that on my first board. And then it was finally time to start cutting out the deck of the board. So as you can see, the machine is just going around and doing its thing, cutting out the shape. And it actually went very smoothly for this cut which is what all that excess prep work did around the outside. Removing all the extra material before actually getting into shaping the board is definitely the way to go. Once the top is finished being cut, uh, I take the blank off of the machine and I remove the, the excess foam that's around the outside of the board before cutting out the bottom. And then I go back and I measure out the, the suction cups again for cutting out the bottom of the board. Clean up the blank, clean up the suction cups and start cutting out the bottom. So cutting out the bottom of the board is way faster than cutting out the deck because I don't have to remove all of the excess material. It's already been done on the top, but the thing about cutting out the bottom is that if you don't line up the board perfectly, it's going to be messed up because the machine doesn't know how to line up the board, so you have to do that manually, eyeballing it. Basically, how well you line up the board is how good your finished board is going to be. The shaping actually turned out really well on this. One of the rails was a little bit thicker than the other because I messed up my lineup a little bit, but it, I don't think it would be anything that I would notice on the water too much. So I just started to fiberglass it. I did one single layer of six ounce glass on the bottom of the board. Because it is a kite board after all, it's gonna have to go through a lot more of a beating than a normal surfboard. And then on the deck, I did a single layer of four ounce and a single layer of six ounce uh, fiberglass for a total of 10 ounces, which is uh, pretty heavy for a normal you know, performance short board, which is basically what this is. But um, considering it's a kite board, I figured I'd do a little bit of extra glass because it's still gonna be pretty light since it's a smaller board. After the glassing the top, I did a hot coat on the bottom, followed by a hot coat on the deck and that's just pouring resin over the glass to seal any of the cracks and, and give you something to sand down to a nice finish. And then I started sanding. And sanded some more. I'm not a pro glasser at this point, not at all. So I also don't really care if it looks amazing because I'm just gonna go and beat the crap out of it on the water and who knows how long it's gonna last anyways. I like it underwater, it's peaceful.
I built this thing to be a high wind freestyle board. So lots of grip on the takeoff and lots of nose rocker for the hot landings so that you don't dig your nose in on kite loops. And it's actually been holding up really well. I haven't broken it. I've been looping on it all week, still in one piece. It's pretty rare that you get on a board and you just start landing everything right away. And that's kind of what happened on this one. So I think the shape is gonna work for me.